Good afternoon. Welcome to uh, our 2017 uh, Bendix Text Talk. And uh, my name is Rich Nagel. I'm the Director of Marketing for Charging, which is our air dryers, compressors, dampers. Um, over the past couple years, we've done uh, a similar presentation about how to use oil coalescing uh, in an air dryer to help protect a number of components on the truck. And uh, I think this year we, we wanted to put some more emphasis on uh, why oil, co oil coalescing is important and some of the technological changes that have been occurring on trucks. We've seen a lot of things happen the last two or three years um, that are starting to drive, I think, a, a need for a better air system. So today I want to talk a little bit about how oil coalescing in general protects critical air systems on your truck um, and how to keep, uh, keep it on the road and out of the shop. So when you think of compressed air on a truck, usually pretty simple. You think of the air brake system, right? And for anybody who's worked on an air brake system, pretty traditional in terms of the, uh, the brake valves and the, uh, the actuation. But over the years, brake systems have become a lot more complicated, right? First it was ABS, now we have stability mandates, and we're moving into a world of more and more automated manual transmissions, more and more emissions controls. And one thing all those components have in common is that they rely on compressed air air that's much cleaner, that needs to be much cleaner than it was a couple years ago. And I think a lot of people um, have kind of lost sight of, we're not just providing dry air to the system, we need cleaner now. And so what we are faced with today is having to remove oil aerosols out of the air system. Now I'll talk a little bit about how aerosols get into your system, the types of damage, what they can do, and how we can prevent them. So, you know, water collecting in tanks it's pretty well known, right? Anybody who drives a truck in cold weather has to deal with brake freeze, how to deal with that, how to keep water out of the system, why the air dryer is on the truck. Oil aerosols and, and how they get in and what they do is a lot less understood, but it's becoming more and more important. So I want to spend a little time talking about uh, oil aerosols, what they do, how they get in, how we can take care of it. So first off, you got to think of your air compressor very similar to the engine in your truck and it's a reciprocating piston. It's designed to, uh, to pass a certain amount of oil, right? It takes oil from the crankcase, uses it for lubrication. Unfortunately, some of that oil passes through the compressor and gets into the air system. And when it passes the compressor, it's pressurized, it's hot, there's a lot of moisture in that air, and that's gotta go someplace, right? So air dryers were put on trucks back in the 70s to remove that moisture, keep it out of the service tanks. Now, you can't take oil passing out of a compressor, it's required. What you can do is kind of work on how much oil passing and then how to actually deal with it. So the things to understand about a, a compressor, there's three major topics, right? One is the design of the compressor, um, who the manufacturer is, whether it's a single, whether it's a twin, um, how it's designed internally. But even the best compressor on the market, uh, like our, our BA921 that's over there at the kiosk, is probably the lowest oil passing available, and it still will pass up to a quart of oil a year, brand new out of the box. Um, there are other compressors, even brand new, that'll pass up to three times that, um, up to a liter of oil a year. So that's a lot of oil that passes into the air system, gets into different valves, gets into the uh, automated manual transmission shifters, and causes all kinds of problems for people. The other thing you have to look at is the age of the compressor, whether it's a single, whether it's a twin, Obviously, the older the compressor is and the harder you run it, duty cycle uh, determines whether it's going to pass more oil or not. So after eight or nine years, right, that compressor is starting to pass a lot more oil. Uh, you really can't control that. You can try to repair it, but you'll still have some of those issues. And then if you replace the compressor, do you replace it with something new? Is it reman? Is it genuine? Is it an all mix? Was it repaired? And how that's done, who remanufactures and how it's repaired, affects the quality of that uh, compressor long term. And um, we have a lot of customers who replace the valve plates, uh, the heads on the compressors, right, when they have problems. And that fixes one issue, but that oil, the oil is still coming out of that compressor. So even though you fix the valve plate and maybe eliminate some problems, you're still gonna get oil in the system. So then, you know, how do you minimize the amount of oil out of that compressor? It's really tough to do, because even with the brand new one, you're relying on really the specifications that were designed in from the supplier. And you can help minimize oil passing by um, sticking with either a service new or a genuine uh, as opposed to a straight repair, but it's not easy to control that at the compressor. 
So where does that air go? It goes into the air dryer. That's the first thing that comes out of the air compressor. And that dryer was designed really to remove water from the truck and keep it out of the brake system. But the dryer also becomes the first point where oil goes into and gets trapped. And it wasn't really designed to capture oil. It just happens to be there. So what happens with all that oil passing? Remember, the air dryer, its construction is there's, a, there's desiccant beads in here. There's thousands of little beads. They're made out of silicon oxide or aluminum oxide. And they're designed so that when moisture comes into them, it sticks to those desiccants during the charge cycle. And then during the purge cycle, they're removed. And so they, they purge out. What happens when oil comes into the system, it fills, it fills the, uh, the desiccant bed, starts to contaminate it. Over time, this fills up with oil. It's no longer removing moisture it's actually passing oil back into the system. So it gets to a point where you're getting you know, equal amounts of water and oil going through the dryer itself. And when those oil aerosols go into the dryer and get passed into service tanks, that creates all kinds of problems downstream. You start to get issues with valves clogging, uh, small valves on the automated manual transmissions start to, to uh, stick, malfunction. Uh, sometimes emissions controls, EGR, dosing functions, those types of things will contaminate. And those are very expensive repairs when you have to fix them. So since the air dryer is the first thing that comes you know, after the compressor, it's the best place to remove oil aerosols. And how does that work? So first, we want to understand what an oil coalescing filter is. And this is a standard, this is our Pure Guard dryer cartridge. It's a, a spin-on cartridge, very common, used on most air dryers. And the basic construction in here is the air enters up through the center and then it passes through a first a, a filter element that removes small contaminants. And inside here, you can't see it, there's a, a desiccant material, which is a kind of a composite filter, and that collects oil aerosols, allows them to, to stick together and get larger. At some point, those oil drops get large enough where they actually fall into the bottom of the dryer. The next thing is the the dryer desiccant, that's what actually removes the moisture. And then when we purge, we backflow, right? We come back through here, we flow backwards, and in this PureGuard design, there's actually a check valve inside the dryer cartridge so that we bypass that desiccant. We don't force it all back in through the system again. So this type of a cartridge is really the most effective way to remove oil that gets into your air system. It's a very simple thing to do. So. You know, the result for, for customers, right, a design like this can remove a significant amount of oil and protect things like automated manual transmissions from expensive repairs. All right, so increasingly, truck builders today are specifying their air dryers with an oil coalescing air dryer and filter. You've got today Volvo, Mac, all their vehicles have a dryer like this. Um, any Freightliner with a DDC engine or an automated transmission and now all Kenworth and Peterbilt trucks. So it's becoming fairly standard in the industry. What we like to tell people for second and third owners, people that have used trucks or even the second or third time around, if you're trying to save money, one of the areas people will look at is to go to a standard cartridge, right? A, a lower cost kind of a house brand. And uh, you know it's tempting to save money that way, but the problem is you won't get the oil removing function. And if your truck, even if it's 10 years old and it has an automated transmission, or it has emission controls that rely on air, if you don't take that oil out of the system, they're gonna fail. And those, those repair costs sometimes, like an automated transmission shifter is two to $3,000 to repair. Typically the emission valves are like $1,000. So you might save some money on the cartridge, but you end up paying for it in the service cost. So one of the other first questions we're asked is about life of the dryer cartridge. How often do we have to change it? And it depends on a lot of factors, especially how you drive the truck, is it vocational? Are you doing long haul, right? Lots of stops, do you have lots of axles? Do you have a lot of air functions? So there's not really a, uh, a single answer and also depends on what kind of a compressor, whether it's a single or a dual. Um, what we tell people generally, if you've got uh, an AMT and you've got an oil coalescing filter like this, if you're doing long haul, probably every two years you should replace a dryer cartridge. If you're doing vocational, more heavy duty, it could be a year, it could be less than a year. So if you use a lot of air and you depend on that air, you wanna make sure that dryer cartridge is replaced. It's also important to replace like for like. So it's very, you know, it's becoming more important to not substitute what the OE equipped the truck with, with 
kind of a house brand that might cost less money. So in closing, I'd like to take a couple of things away from our tech talk. Number one, if you have an oil coalescing dryer on your truck today, you need to replace it with an oil coalescing replacement cartridge. Uh, for Bendix, every one of our dryers, our ADIP, our 89, um, our ADIS, the real common ones, there's an oil coalescing option for all of those. So even if your truck doesn't have a coalescing filter, but you're having oil problems, you can buy a replacement cartridge as a will fit, either service new or reman. It'll go right in the existing dryer. You don't have to buy a completely new dryer. And you can even upgrade any competitive dryer. So if it's not a Bendix dryer, especially if it's spin-on, by putting a PureGuard type oil coalescing filter, you can, you can add that protection and help uh, keep your truck running longer. So thank you for attending our talk today. If you have any questions, I'll be around after the booth. And once again, have a great Mats 2017. Thanks for stopping by.